And happy Friday, everyone. We get to doing some rust today. Now, I don't have my chat going yet. <laughs> updated my Raspberry Pi. It is... Oh, and I also updated Rust on it. So it's rebuilding Capitan. set up. Firefox is taking a while. Rusty is taking all of the resources. Hey, morning, museum. Crane left back end for Rusty was merged yet recently. Ooh, nice. It's only for enabled for building the compiler itself. Well, that is still really, really exciting. That is really cool. be really nice it, it's to get that 40 percent decrease in build times be incredible all right that would be awesome I mean, right now, Rust Analyzer does a lot for you. Because Rust Analyzer will tell you what's broken before you actually get to the, to quote unquote, run the compiler, right? for Godot Rust. It'll make Rust Analyzer faster too. Wow. Well, I mean, Rust, I guess the startup time for Rust Analyzer is a little slow. But outside of that, I'm, I mean, it's telling me that I have errors before I finish the line. I don't know if it, I need errors before I start typing. <laughs> I 
Yeah, for the squiggles, yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. Like, like it's it's telling you that you're going to have a squiggle. Like, hold on. Rethink what you're thinking. <laughs> now, you know what? I want to do one of these. I'm going to fix that. Ooh, what did I do recently? I think I did. I think I did tell it to update something recently. I don't know though. Most analyzers there doesn't do a type checking or anything like that. I see, just trace solving. Oh, I see, I see. That's pretty cool. That's really cool. I wonder if it will have, like, what sort of impact that'll have on the community. Just having having the development system like that faster. Will it accelerate things? Or is the learning curve still going to be an issue? Will that actually help with the learning curve because people will get feedback faster? Did, did I turn that off? I didn't want that off. Get a rust, get a rust. I want to go look at my PR. Is there are certain things I, I want to undo? It's only slow when you add in heavy depths. I see. I think I'm partly excited about having crane lift over there. Um, now, I, I don't understand crane lift well enough, but it seems like like there should be some way for um, for that to also help with uh, macros. And I don't I don't know why, but I see crane lift and I see rasm wasm, and they're like in the same bucket meant for me mentally. And it's like, wow, it's like WASM. Like, maybe we could have macros and WASM files and stuff like that actually over there as well. The whole uh, running macros faster. But I know that's, that's probably not not true. <laughs> but it's like, like, they're just in the same box mentally. Crane lift is basically LLVM, but written in Rust and doesn't have to do super fancy optimizations. Let's see. All right. I want to clean this up and make it an actual PR because there, there's been like all of the feedback thus far has been a heart tier, which I, I appreciate. Um, but I want to move this along. I think part of that, uh, part of the stuff that I want to undo, um, has to do with um, some of the code, which, which in my opinion, isn't needed, quote unquote, yet. 
Um, I would like this PR to be a little smaller. Because I think it's going to be hard to reason through in its current state. So. Let's see, I want to match. Smaller PRs? Not you. <laughs> I just want to make sure that that the the changes in here are done purposely. Um, like supporting this at the tests here. It's it's nice to have these, but I don't know. <laughs> You got lazy and a huge PR for Twitch chat. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's a 9,000 line spread there. Adjust the heater, be right back. That's like 20 commits. Oh, goodness. Wow. So one thing that I was unsure about with this was the changes in the Token Stream 2 uh, setup I'm not sure. I'm not. See, this this is what what gets me. Um, these were changed so that I could basically set this up, but I don't know how much value this is adding, and if this makes it easier to maintain, if it's just overhead. I mean, the other tests for this, I mean, they're, they're in other places, right? It's not a, kind of a little um, test module here. So I'm having second thoughts about these elements. Basically the changes that support Parse, uh, using parse to etc. in this in these locations. It's completely compatible with token stream. So, just a shim to backport to older versions of the compiler, I see. So, given that, is it a bad thing to, let's see, where, where are we in here? Core macros. Oh no, th these are the wrong macros. Um, Sit in here.
All right, here. It's also forward compatible. Let's see. Hmm. So, when having these macros, In the current implementation here, I've constrained token stream to the function that is called by the compiler. And then everything from there is basically token stream two um, as, it, as it goes further into the code. Let me see if I can find an example here. That's methods. And then we convert this a little bit later. Yeah, the token stream two. And I guess what I'm, what what's getting me is, is this a reasonable change? Right, having token stream here, and basically token stream itself is constrained to that function. Anything past there is token stream two, and it's the same with the other, the other methods that have been changed in here. The other, well, they're not methods; they're functions. Um, and not that one, though. I didn't do that one. <laughs> like this one here. I think we did the same thing with this one. With the drive input. From variant, okay, those I don't think I changed. It looks like it's really just in here. That's in derive. That's what we end up passing in. So I want to look at this file in the PR and see how much of this has changed. Oh, it's, it's right there. So we move some of this parsing up that was happening down further. As part of this was the token stream. We wanted to be able to call these other functions from the tests. So some of this actually was, was pulled up from the calling function that's called drive methods. So it's receiving the impl block instead of these two. Interesting going back and looking at the code again. doing the input validation right here at the entry point. That seems reasonable. Why would we end up just passing stuff through? As if it was shared. Here's with input. Okay, that's good, good. That pattern is common. Okay. But it doesn't seem like what like we wouldn't want it. I
Okay, so that's returning early. In the second method, you do the error handling. I see. I see, so just getting the stuff that they want out. Hey, good morning, pink fluffy llama. Gonna take a peek at these other ones too. Same thing. Unwrap rails, two compile errors. Hmm. Interesting. I see, and they, they end up returning a list of errors, well, a vector of errors. Mapping that, each one, one of those to the compiler error, and then just including all of those in the output. Interesting. So if we were going to try to do that with this, Let's see what do we have down here? We've got a couple of these profile. This is still in lib. Interesting. Where is error with input? Oh, it's, it's actually in that function. And this is essentially what the, well, it's more elegantly set up piece here is doing. That they're using token stream two from then on. I see that they're using, oh, let's see, they pull this into derive input And this is going to be taking it to expand. 
Well, that's token stream two, isn't it? Done. Basically goes back to token stream one here. Okay. So what else do we have here? We have this macro, proc macro attribute. We have methods. We have profile, not touching that one. Derive native class. I see. I do like the other pattern that, that they're using. <laughs> You'd love to get one of those Fender American and acoustic guitars in green. Acoustic fenders. It's funny, I don't normally think of fenders as acoustic. Let's change this up. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and put this across. Async trade is a little different. It passes a exclusive borrow of an item around. Coffee link location. Let's take a look. So we have async trade. Parse macro input. Okay, so they have the items. Token stream versus... Oh, okay. I see. So basically, you're you end up mutating this thing around, and then you return this. Huh. Okay. That makes sense too. All right, Let's so see. We do that in a couple places as well, don't we? profiled. Where is our... Huh. I see, we end up cloning and then just including it. So we pass this impl block through here. the errors to the item directly instead of returning the errors. I think there was a reason why we 
couldn't do that. Wasn't there? Oh, no, no, no. Because we still need to have the input. That's right, because if we don't have the input, then we'll get some other comp compiler errors. So including the input actually silences some of the other compiler errors. Subtly different styles. By they, you mean <laughs> detail night? Yes. <laughs> yes, I understand. Um, so coming back through, not this one, uh, this area again. So in this case, when they do a proc macro derive, yeah, that's a, that's a derive, and the derive lets you generate code but not mutate the input stream. So this this one I, I get because that input stream is still actually held by the compiler. Um, so it's not like you consume it and you destroy it. This here is the most common form. Okay. Then Saturday here is also doing that, which makes sense how they're doing this. Then when you get to this, this is a proc macro attribute and you have to include the original stream. Otherwise you end up getting other errors. And that's why they're just tacking on the errors. There's an entrance merge request that you need to review, but there's no merge request to be seen. <laughs> Wrong repo? <laughs> Uh, that's funny. Normally you just do quote args my stuff. I see. Coming back to this example then. Oh, I guess. No, that doesn't make this one here. Yeah. Incandidating the old with the new. But I think in our case, we also have to. Didn't we have to remove elements? Or am I thinking of the uh, the exercises that we had gone through? Because um, methods has to remove other. No, no, it does have to mutate it, doesn't it? If we come in here, wind up mapping through into iter. I thought there was a case where um, we ended up identifying something and then dropping a portion of it. So we can't just take the input and drop it into the output. We actually have to remove, remove portions. Let me go look at the macro uh, docs on this. GD native documentation. Ah. Where are the doc where's the documentation on this? Was uh, uh was it on native class? Yeah, you have this, which has those elements, but then you can also have methods. I mean, that's, that's the same thing. Um, let's go look at the book on that. You can add documentation to that derived macro. Oh, that would be fantastic.
Because the methods let you decide what you want to export. Oh, that's what the, the attribute was. It was export. So if we come in here. Exported method. Well, GD native expose, builder call site. Okay, so here's our builder. Ah, here's the AST items. I'm pretty sure somewhere in here that element is actually getting removed. Because if we come back, let's see, is this here? Ah, here's a good example. Methods here ends up removing export. It replaces export with a bit of code. So that has to be removed. You can use iterator sum like cluck? I did not know that. Huh. No, that's cool. Right, let's go back to the seventh tab. Go back a little bit. Come back here. We're just trying to reason through why we need why we need this in one pattern or the other. Um, and I think in the first example, we couldn't actually do it the way that they're doing. Um, in this area because we have to output the input, which is fine, right? We could do the quote. But it would have to be the version that I guess for the error we could we we could still do that. We could still something similar to this so it's more like more like this but it'd be the item and the arrows but if we have an error I don't know if the items are complete are returned all right so going into here this is returns a token stream too we might just want to return I guess tagging the errors onto it. That could be interesting. So if we're going to put this back and convert it to one of those other forms, we have impl block here, which is really a token stream. Bytes. Oh, and you can summon. Huh, that's pretty cool. That's neat. Are there other operators? I mean, there must be other similar. 
similar functions that let you do the same thing. Now, in this case, they're parsing these two elements and then passing the args and the item through. Now, we are expecting this one to actually be a nothing. Why, why do we keep meta around? Why is this cloned? Ah, oh, for the error. I see. Yeah, we can, we can fix that by passing it through and returning all the result. See, in this case, they're not expecting this to fail, are they? Oh, this returns early. That's why we can't do this. Just collect some on product. I see. So this is why we can't actually do this. Um, parse macro input returns an error directly. And it, it doesn't actually include the, the input here. So if we try to do a parse macro input as nothing, it would return early but not include input, which is why we're doing it this way. It's basically the expanded form of that, where we return the error along with the input stream. So while this is very terse, we're not able to use it because we actually need the input. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 that makes sense. Um, Interesting. That means that we could either convert it to a token stream to here and pass that in and let them do the cast to nothing. Then we handle this separately. Your pen ran out of ink. I uh, could have used that. That bad. Huh? What kind of pen do you have? Oh yeah, this is, you're right, this should be an is error. Um, you don't know if parse is input for forward parse? Oh, interesting, I see. Let's go look at sin. Oh, nice. You know, but you need ball eye pens, which are pretty comfy.
Aren't there uh, lefty fountain pens? I thought they had a couple of uh, things like that. I wonder what the difference is, like the technical difference in this. This is the nib. Must be shaped differently. To make it flow one way versus the other. Makes sense. Just rotate. <laughs> it's got to be more complicated than that. Yeah, I'm okay with this. This, I think it kind of marries with that pattern. Oh, I see. That makes sense. There's always a Da Vinci method of just writing from the right side to the left. See what this is doing. It's just just to be totally backwards and confuse everyone. <laughs> Imagine getting this space slash line estimation wrong. Killer Queen 55. This is in Rust today. Riding in Rust. I, I'm looking through this, this code just trying to figure out if there's a simpler way. And coming back to this code here, which museum to point us out. Um, the one, the, the reason that we can't do this is our code is most similar to this is because these functions here return early. And if we return early, then we get additional compiler errors, which I'm trying to avoid. So we have to return an error that has the input But it does feel like this would be simplified by 
by passing these in one level, so converting them to a token stream two, passing them in, and then if something does go wrong, we just include the, in, the original input and go on from there. Then return the results of the parse straight method here. Right. The parse straight method on args and item. Which makes sense. It's just that Oh, interesting. They return the you shove your error in the error side of it. That's interesting. How would you do that? So basically call parse on nothing and then map error. Oh, well, that's neat. No, it's not same. It would basically be the same thing, but kind of flipped. Um, that's interesting. I just want to see that. So it would be sin parse nothing parse basically and then we give it the meta clone there so that would return an error here and then we'd map error here with uh, some function keep going Oh, you were talking about implementing parts of my type. I see. Sorry, um, so you're saying the idea here is to create my own type, which is basically a nothing as well, that then errors with the additional information in it. RFK and I.
But if we just wanted to call the the trait function on this, nothing here. Nothing. Huh. Oh, sin parse parse. Oh, it wants a parse buffer, not a token stream. I see, and that's what those other functions actually do to convert it. Ah, <laughs> okay. That's making more sense. You provided the token stream. Oh, I see. And then it calls parse, giving it the parse function for T and the tokens. That is neat. That is neat. So basically what, what this comes back to is well on, let, let me undo a little bit. Where were we? We're back here. So in this case, we end up giving it nothing, and that gives it the function to par pass to the parser, and then let it clone like so. When oh. Oh, that's interesting. So, in this case, we can map error. Getting whatever the error is, which we are going to throw away. Turns a token stream. Did I not close that? Let's close. Okay. Now this is returning a token stream, which is not what we want. We want to return an error. 
I know this isn't pretty. Let's. I just want to see it work first. And this here returns a result, right? So we should be able to do that on the result that comes off of this. Oh, it's not implemented for token stream. Returns of new eight. All right. I haven't done the rust in like a week. Wow. Um, question mark operator. Okay. So. Okay. First off, do this. Let's get that out of there. That's annoying me. Oh, because it's. Yeah, because we can't return that, so that's not the return type. So in this case, we'd still have to, if is error, return the error. This case, then we wouldn't have the error, we'd have to build it outside of this, etc. So the takeaway here we do that instead. And then we, then we, yeah. I mean, this instead of the map error, hmm. because we're not actually using anything from the error, just the signal that it is an error. that we have this here is because of the token stream and using that instead of quote and generating the, the error be nice to be able to do that. We need the input. Hmm. I 
I wonder if there's another way to not have to kind of double encode that. Because we're going basically from token stream two, well, from token stream one to two to one again. Very short period. The input here gets converted just so that quote can can handle it. And it doesn't handle multiple errors. Which is where I think this is going to end up. Quote should work on Token Stream 2. Yeah, it. that's what we're doing. We convert it to Token Stream 2 just to convert it back to a Token Stream 1. It's a little weird. It's almost like we just want to append the input to the token stream. Right, the, the error. Is there another way to, to expand a token stream? Let's go back here, token stream. Oh, that's, that's actually here. So we can extend. Is that available to us? If we had that and we did a uh, uh, two compiler error, that returns a token stream. That's the error in there. Oh, this does need a return. Instead of the unit output. Oh, extend doesn't actually ex... Oh, I see. So we do uh, error extend input. And then error. But that has to be a collection. Is it once? That's a token stream. Why is extend only for... I mean, this doesn't know about token stream two. Morning, Rymo. You have a question about Rust format? Ooh, interesting. Input in this case should be a token stream. Ones. Now it's saying it's a proc, proc Mac two token stream. I thought this error here.
All right, so this is probably the wrong type. Is that standard proc macro? That's no, just proc macro. Okay. Okay, that should error. Yes. All right. Someone issued a pull request to one of your crates. They wanted to conform to Rust format, but the default config makes your code look ugly in parts. So that, that, that's really interesting. Um, for me, if the default formatter isn't like the, the Rust format isn't working for you, I, I mean, it's your circus, your monkeys, your rules, right? So whatever you want, it, it goes with your stuff, right? Like your library. Um, Now, and I would be completely okay coming in and contributing to your library with, you know, your rules, right? It's your town. Um, I also think that, like, for me, as long as I can read it quickly, efficiently, and it's maintainable, I don't care. Right? That's why I tend to use Rust format, and I just change the, uh, the word wrap most of the time, um, the length of the word wrap for streaming, right? Because sometimes having code on the stream, it gets a little long. And so I think now I'm, I'm, I've gone back to using the 120 character. I used to have the console output on the right over here before I used Rust format, excuse me, uh, Rust analyzer. And it made it a lot, a lot quicker to iterate because I could see the errors quickly. But now I think I'm just back to using the default. Morning, JT. How are you? Oh, interesting.
So that ignore, is that, are you giving it a path there? Saying ignore all the things? Ah, interesting. Okay. I'm just wondering what the, uh, the slash is in that array. That's the manifest root. Gotcha. Oh, that makes your intentions clear. I think I, I value um, consistent styling over any specific style. Extend. I mean, that seems okay, but it seems like we can actually push that down into here instead of using quote. <laughs> yeah. Uh...
All right, that simplifies that a bit. Um, Yeah, once is cool. I also like that um, some works for that too. Now what about this block? So this to me feels like it's really along the same lines as this code over here and right? that I'm having to attach the input along with the error and this is returning the error directly. So really that, that translates to these functions here and here or these blocks here and here. that a little bit but yeah. seems seems okay isn't there some way to basically append one iterator to another without collecting them um yeah chain it's called chain This. All right, that I think is okay. And to me, it's it's performing the same sort of thing here that these two elements here do. The only difference now is it's down here. 
And in this case, it's modifying the input block as shown in the end two, which arguably is uh, And they're just being expressive here, token stream from. So you see exactly what it is. In this case, they're expanding item. Now, what are we doing? In this case, we give the input block. It's entirely to that. We get a token stream two out. Should be okay. Okay. Yeah, that's not that's not not bad at all. Profile. I don't think we touched on here. Let's fix this up again. Send parse on that. Now in this case, we can just return the, the error. More than patatas del papa. I mean, part of me wants to like still push this into that the inner inner function just so that the error can be returned a consistent way. Let's see what happens here. Ah, oh, we have to give the empty native class in this case. Oh, what's that? Can you get the context? We are looking at um, some of the macros inside of the GD native library. And if you're asking about the cheat sheet, we're talking about, about this Rust cheat sheet here. I wonder if we can actually combine these two errors instead of having the one for each case. I mean, if it can't be parsed as drive input, then... Oh, actually, why, why aren't we doing the um, parse macro input on that? Well, that should just be like this, right? That's the equivalent, isn't it? Oops. Oh, my mouse wires. Oh. All right, there we've got our parse macro input. Good, input as derived. Now if we look at this. In this case, let's do the map instead. Map error. See if error. That goes through.
Actually, what? How did they do that over here? Yeah, they did the unwrap or else. That's right. And what is... Isn't quite what we want, is it? What are semicolons? <laughs> oh, yeah, Vectrain. Vectrain is cool. <laughs> oh, yes, I remember Fizzbuzz. Nice. <laughs> oh. That's going to return a result. Okay, but if the result fails, get rid of that error here. Now these both should end up in the same with the same type. Is there a way to unwrap a result? Like a result that has both error and OK of the same type to a single value? Let's say you just want to refer that value. Does unwrap or else returns the contained OK value or computes it? But I don't want that. Maps result TE by you applying a function that contained OK value. Oh, I see. It takes two functions. I did not see that before. I could use a map or else. And in this case, it would be identity, or we return a token stream. Uh, is it a token stream too? That's oh, just a regular token stream. Why are we returning a regular token stream there? odd. Ah, regardless. In that case, we could use identity. Where is identity? Standard convert identity. <laughs> that is longer than the other function. Error. 
It's not right. Is it because it doesn't know the type here? It doesn't... Identity is a rare function. I like identity. I mean, I want the exact same thing. Yeah. out the type. Uh, let foo. Found send error. I thought this was supposed to let me convert to the map or else. I guess we're already there. Oh, E is a, wait, wait. D and F. Oh, I got them backwards. <laughs> That's why you don't use the method, it's backwards. Yeah, I, I can see. Oh, that, and I forgot to close the... Forgot to close the pr pr principles. <laughs> should be or else math <laughs> all right that, that seems okay I like using this here I think that'll be fine um, so let's An option. On option is different.
the default element goes first, then the mapping of the sum. Just why it's backward on result. In the same order. Oh, none errors, I'm okay. I've been going through and this past couple days I haven't been streaming. I've had to I ended up at the DMV yesterday. That was fun. Um, I guess just life. Life's happening. I have missed programming in Rust. I like Rust. As the DMV adjusted well to COVID. Let's see where I am. You go inside, you put your name and phone number, cell phone number on a list and take a number. Then you go wait in your car and they call you. The DMV hasn't adjusted well to Earth. <laughs> yeah, in our in our area, it was uh, five people were allowed in at a time. Oh, that's funny. Strangely more efficient. Hmm. has been running for over 60 seconds i don't i don't remember seeing that ashburn has some nice apis am i doing this in the wrong place ah wrong place been playing with the raw entry API to check to see if something is in a map returning early without allocating a known type. Oh, interesting. Nice. tests let's see give a Q or pre-computed hash instead of a K oh interesting like a normal entry would that's cool
So you don't have to hash it twice. That's pretty cool. Unless you bail out. Or an insert is done. Hey, look at that. It's passing. Well, this is good. to get going here in a moment. All right, you go. We're going to raid Ryan Levick. I 
think we need to finish uh, cleaning this up probably this weekend sometime. Well, until next time, thanks for hanging out. And Final Spartan, I believe so. Until next time, bye-bye.